Because of one has been invested in me, I strongly believe that to whom much is given, much is expected. And that when we have access and privilege, we are supposed to be good stewards of those access and good stewards of the privilege that we've been given. And um, that's why I raise my voice in service to the rights of women and girls, especially for African women and girls on the continent and right here in the diaspora. Um, there are three things I just want you to walk away with that, and in my work that I have done, that everywhere I go, women are always holding it down. Everywhere you go, you find that it is women and girls who are holding it down. The second thing is that women hold solutions in their hands. However, sometimes it's very difficult to deploy those solutions. And so it's important to create spaces and provide opportunities so that women can launch out and really bring these solutions to the table. And the last thing is that women remain the full source of what makes the Indian you know, go. And so with that, I'm just going to sing the song that I sort of modified. It's an old song from a group from Ghana. I thought they used to be the task for right, in, in Europe called the city star. And uh, they did a song called Welcome Home. And I put a little to <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our next speaker we will be calling up is Miss Theo Soa. You know, very powerful poem. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. It really speaks to the theme of amplifying AWBS. So for all of you who are here today, um, if you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, our hashtag today is Amplify AWBS. Okay? Over here. Tradition and the remembrance of things past are a rediscovered country of things we struggle against. Where, as pygmy women, we stand tall among the Bantu and name ourselves, Wabongo. We stand here, compassionate witnesses to witches who are just mothers, to mothers who are just loyal, to those who wrestle snakes to feed their children, and to grandmothers who keep faith enough with girls to make God change his mind. Just as we are, if we don't tell our stories, who will speak out for us when? We claim our bodies for ourselves and weep no more when. We write to each other and teach ourselves not to trade our bodies for security, wealth, and power, or whatever price they can bring. When we call out and claim a love that knows no name and has no place, when we learn it's not rage if we still love our daddy as his bewildering passion penetrates us, shocking us to learn the forbidden pathways of ourselves and the things we struggle for. If we don't tell our stories, hailstones will continue to fall on our heads, thrown by fathers for the children to see, for we are not good women, thrown by imams by a judge's decree, for we are not good wives, thrown by other women in our husbands' lives as they come in the morning cradling his children, calling us witch, barren, bitch, and we find something to tie the chest with, challenging words to hurl back in battle, and partners to hold us anyway through the things we struggle against. If we don't tell our stories, who will know we did not comply? We did not wish our lives away, but stayed focused and staunched the cuts of virginal blood to stop our daughters being slaves, 
we learn to sing survival songs through violence and rape and war. We did not tell each other lies or taste no poison all alone and stitched for our dead, not effigies, but new dolls. So our artistry displays only prayer kills despair through the things we struggle for. When we share strategy through story, we empower ourselves to take a stand and bear witness through our words in blood and ink, to wage peace as an act of faith, to act out, to call out by name the things we fear, not just victims or betrayed child soldiers, liberated from the fires of oil or greed or power. We claim a collective love, plant trees or wage a campaign, sing songs or keep peace, as agents of a just resistance now and as in the past. Through bondage and through freedom, we share our tactics, we document. We write from every different place to reclaim our names and inherited legacies we want to pass along. We write to stay in places as we choose. We who crossed the Atlantic all those yesterdays ago. We who have come again today. We who have stayed in place through generations. We who will stay in place tomorrow or move on between generations, between cultures, between locations, as we ourselves want now as in the future. We envision new futures for ourselves as we weep with each other in silence or love. We network behind shop counters and on factory floors. We engage across industrial landscapes and in mining villages. We reach out from fishing boats and commercial farms. We meet in schools, churches, parliaments, and slums. And from dance floors to prison cells, we are Ellen Johnson Surly in the Liberian State House. We are the tomorrow our grandmothers dreamed. We are grandmothers dreaming other tomorrows. Our own compassionate witnesses standing at the edge.